Hey, welcome back to CK Midwest Models. Sorry I'm a little late on this one. This is going to be part two of our Inacubic 6KS setup. We're going to go through the slicing. We're going to throw some models on it to uh, show you what you can do with it. And then we're going to get it ready to put into the printer. So follow us, will you please? Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell to kind of remind you of when another video is coming out. So thank you very much, and let's get going. In the package of stuff you get in your printer, you're going to see a, a, a USB stick. First thing you got to do is push that into your computer and uh, look for the file for it. I mean, it's right down here in USB drive D. You're going to see four files for items in there and you're going to want any cubic photon workshop now this here is the test model that you can build to test your printer to make sure it's working it right right now we're going to do some slicing it's a slicing software and you got the mac or you got a windows i have a windows and you just double click on this and you're going to get this and you're going to just go through it like you normally do with setting up any kind of program on your computer and answer all the questions and hit the OK as many times as you have to. We're not going to do that because I've been set up already. So when you do that, you're going to get this. This is the Anycubic Workshop. This is where you will do your slicing. You will do your modifications to your part and do whatever you want to do to a part. Now I got to make a, uh, a, a item for my diorama so I'm going to load that right now this is a bard and you basically go up here to open file find a location where you saved your model and click it and then load it on load in for you now there's a lot of things you can do with this um, I'll show you the kind of the display first right click your mouse and you can swivel around go up and down get all kinds of views to it you can hit the wheel, press the wheel down, and you can go up and down. It's a very easy um, slicing software. It doesn't take a lot of uh, um, training, and it does everything for you. So once it's highlighted, you can do things to it. Up here, you can clone it. I'm going to add one. You can repair it if you think it needs a repair. It's always good to kind of repair it just to make sure. This is the hollow. Now, the hollow. Um, there are different settings for the hollow. You can do internal structure, how thick you want the walls, um, inside direction, all the other kind of stuff I usually don't worry about too much. But if I have a big object and I want to make it hollow um, to save on um, resin, I'll make it hollow. And then all you have to do is just update it and it will do the hollow process for you. Now one thing with hollowing, if you've got a large structure, you're going to want to hit the punch. The punch is to put a hole in it, so when you're done 3D printing it, uh, the resin will drain out of it. You won't have any trapped inside, especially if you're going to have a uh, where all the sides are enclosed and the inside is open. You want to be able to drain that out, preferably on the bottom of the part or a part that's not going to be seen. If you can't do it, then put it in a spot where you'll be able to repair it very easily once it's been uh, printed. But for me, the part I need, we're going to do some modification to it. So to move it, you just hold it, move it down. You go off the, off the um, platform, you can see where it changes color. You can do the move this way. Got to highlight it first. You got your handles. I just like to do a click at once, put it back on platform. And you got your rotators. Here's your handle for your uh, um, different directions. And we always reset. And the one we're going to be using here is a scale. All my parts, this is a 32 millimeter um, high K 
character. I'm going to make it 150 to fit into my diorama. And as far as scaling, you can see this here, it's uniform scale. So when I move one, all of them will scale appropriately. If you want to just move it up higher, out more, you can do the handles and just pull it. But it'll do it universally. Now, if you uncheck this, then you watch this. Then it'll go this way. So it'll just move in one direction. So we're gonna go this way, and we're gonna go back to our 150. We're gonna reset it. Go back to our 150. So that's the part I want to make. Once you got all the th modifications to it that you need to do, uh, look down here. Here's the slicing parameters down here. Now this one here, you can put all kinds of printers in it. These are all these are all the ones I own. You get the manage printer. You can go in and put any printer you want. Now, unfortunately, this only does any cubic. If you want to do something besides an any cubic machine, you got to come down here and open up something called Chitty Box, a Chitty Box. This is the same slicing. It'll do all kinds of uh, um, machines. I have my models in here, but I also have my Lego. A Lego is in there too. So I use that one when I wanted to use the Lego machine. And I can use, I've used this for some mini cubic too. So, and you can get that, that's free online too. So this is slicing parameters. Now, usually I do not touch any of this. I leave it alone. The only thing I touch is this down here, which is normal resin, fast resin, or high speed resin. Now, if you're going to use a high speed resin on the, the um, on the 5S, on the MS, sorry, on the MS, um, you got to make sure you have the high speed resin. I'm just using normal resin. I use the default for fast resin. All this does is make the make the build plate go a little bit faster into the resin in return instead of lagging it through top and bottom. So get all done with that. I'm going to hit slice. Now it's going to ask if it wants to have supports. I don't need to have supports because I already downloaded a, the model that has supports in it. So I'm going to say no direct slicing. And then let it do a slice. There you have it. Now you come over here to the slide bar. And this will put you all the way through the whole thing. A little, little disorientated. You don't know what you're looking for. So then we'll go over to save. And then you find your USB plug that you got from your printer. Click on it. Save it. Name it if you wish. And let it save to the file. All right, it's saved. Now we can get out of this program and we'll, we'll pull it and go to the printer. There are two websites that I use to get models that I 3D print. The very first one I use is Lutz. Now Lutz is a very, very nice... Sorry, I need to get it up. Lutz is a very, very nice place to get a lot, a lot of models for you to 3D print. This is a, a paid service. It costs around 15 bucks a month. And you get, if you can see the dates on here, these are what you get free every month. And there are a lot of stuff in there. Now you can have different types of stuff. You can add for fantasy, sci-fi, Valhalla, which is a Viking um, in Nidavira. That's um, kind of a world that they've created here on Lutz. Now, you can see some of my, mine here that I have got over the months. Um, I mean, they are very, very impressive. Now, um, one that I got down here that I'm using on my uh, <clears throat> 3D model, or 3D diorama, <clears throat> is some of this stuff here. Let it load up. 
And here is the whole bundle. All the different stuff. This is well worth the money for 50. If you can afford 15 bucks a month as a, a subscription, this is a great, uh, great place to get a lot of your uh, parts. A lot of characters, especially a lot of uh, items that you can use in your dioramas and in your 3 and, uh, 3D uh, building and for gaming. A lot of, a lot of people, a lot of gamers put this stuff down. Um, you know, all the um, Dungeons and Dragons and uh, Warhammer and any kind of the 3D game tabletops that are going on right now. The other program is called Minifact, My Mini Factory. Now this is a generic where you can sort anything you want. Anything you want, you can go ahead and put in there. Now the, here they have what they call tribes. These are companies or these are individuals that do a lot of the uh, modeling for 3D printing and you can join them. They cost anywhere from a buck a month to five bucks a month and greater also. And this also you get a lot of um, Per month, you get a lot of uh, um, models that you can build. My library, this is the last one I got for uh, um, December. And you can see all the stuff you get. And that's free. Um, the longer you go, the more, uh, the more bonuses you get. Every three months, you get some bonus stuff. And this is this is well worth it, and especially in the sci-fi, which I I make a lot of uh, parts for, and they're all 3D printable. Uh, sometimes they are supported, sometimes they are not. Uh, if they're not supported, uh, we can support them here in our slicer. Now, for su supporting, um, you just have to play around with it. You have to make sure you tip everything on an angle when you support them. You don't want to go straight up. I never do. I always do it on an angle and then hit support and it'll automatically load your support. So I will have all the links down below in the description um, of where these are at so you can go around and see if these are suitable for you or just search for 3D printing and there's a, a whole bunch of different ones out there depending on, on how your likes.